I said it off the top of today's show that my time in sports, like 27 years in this business and the rest of my life as a wannabe athlete in a crazy sports family, there are three sayings that have stayed tried, tested, and true. They are as follows. The difference between good and great is consistency. Hard work beats talent when talent does not work hard. And special players make special plays on special days. Mary Philippe Poulain embodies them all. And I'm not sure how many people I can say that about, I may be counting on one hand kind of thing. I'll just flat out say it. One of my favorite players on planet Earth, regardless of sport, joins me now, three-time Olympic gold medalist, Mary Philippe Poulain. Thank you so much for coming on the show. Quite an introduction, let me tell you. <laughs> <laughs> not bad, I don't do that for many people, but let me tell you, uh, it is due in your case. Well, thank you. Appreciate that. It, it feels like gold medal number three was like a couple days ago, but have you had some time to like let it sink in? Like, have you put on all three gold medals and just like sauntered around the house yelling what's up or, you know, at all Z, let's go. Like, what are we doing here with the three gold medals? <laughs> I actually have not done that yet. No. But I eventually take a look for sure. But oh, it's been a great two weeks just being able to enjoy it with the uh, so my family and friends, and uh, no, it goes by fast. It's already been two weeks, but uh, still inclined now for sure. Are you the type of person that's always pushing forward, or can you take a step back and realize like what you've accomplished over the last decade and a bit? It's funny that you say that. I feel I have to tell myself uh, a lot of times to just take a breather and take a step back and realize that uh, a little bit of my career. I think it's been pretty surreal. Uh, Pretty lucky to be honest, been surrounded by so many great players and everything I've accomplished so far. But uh, I do have to take a step back sometimes and uh, realize what, what just happened for sure. We're, we're showing your ridiculous resume. I read that you don't like talking about yourself. Is that true? It's very true. So <laughs> that, that's why I was a little caught, caught off guard with that introduction, that's for sure. <laughs> okay, so let me do it for you as if I already have it. But whether it's Captain Clutch or special players make special plays on special days, it's amazing to read off the numbers. And I've done it a couple times, whether you've been on the show or not. You've now scored in every gold medal game that you've played in at the Olympics. That's four of them. You're the only player ever, male or female, to do that at the Olympic Games. And not just scored but scored the goals, three gold medals, and you've scored the game winner in every single one of them. What do you think when I say stuff like that? Uh, pretty, pretty awesome to hear, not gonna lie, but pictures, all the, these girls are the reason why that happens. Uh, I've been so lucky in my career to, to be Surrounded by so many great players, I started my career to play with my idols, where I watch on TV. Those are women that paved the way for all of us, and for all those years we we created a, such a great culture on this team. And the last one was very special. I got to play, I had the chance to play with Jenner and, and Nurse, and they made me look good out there. And uh, it's great. It's awesome. It's hard to put into words, but it's a pretty awesome feeling for sure. How cool is it to see Nurse set a record for the Olympic Games and points in in total uh, for for Sarah? Unbelievable. I was so happy for her. She's had a tough year for sure with an injury. Uh, the way she came back uh, was unbelievable. She she took that uh, from game one at the Olympics and she just uh, went all the way through and uh, truly happy and truly an honor to have the chance to play with her. Okay, so Cami Granato, who's a Hall of Famer and on the other side, that American side, said, and I quote, I don't know one other women's hockey player that is in that many big situations and is that clutch. She's the one, she's talking about you. She says, look up clutch in the dictionary and it's her. There's her picture, there's no disputing that. I had Anne René Debien on the show along with Natalie Spooner and I asked how the hell you do it, they didn't have an answer. So do you know how this moment always seems to find you in the clutch? That's a great question. I still ask myself, to be honest, when things happen like that, it, it's quite surreal. Uh, like I, I, I love to to do extra reps. I love to work hard on and off the ice. Uh, sometimes just doing an extra rep, I tell myself one day it's gonna happen. It's gonna pay off, and it, it does. And sometimes you don't see it right away. Sometimes there is hardship. I'm not gonna lie. I'm pretty lucky that uh, we we only got we 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 got a couple gold medal lasts in my career, but. 
there is hard work there. There is tough shift. There is tough moments where you ask yourself why. It's you don't always see the hard shift, but when you have the right people around you, when you surround yourself with the right uh, group, I think uh, things can go a long way, and that that, that hard work is going to pay off at some point. The more you sweat in practice, the less you bleed in competition. I believe is the saying. <laughs> um, is, is there anything that you do in those moments? Like I. I I've talked to a lot of great athletes in my time, and I love when kids are watching, and they'll come up to me at like my kids' hockey games or baseball games, and they'll ask me about uh, a certain player in certain conversations. So for the kids watching right now, like put yourself in that moment. Like I have a couple books full of quotes of people who are smarter than me, and, and one of the quotes is, the more relaxed you are, the better you are at everything. And I think it's actually Bill Murray who said it. So what's the, been the key for you in those big moments? Like, do you understand what you do well in those moments? Well, I think it's fair you say that because uh, if you look back at this last Olympic, the, the group that we had, uh, we played with so much fun. We played with a big smile on our face through tough times, to, through uh, fun time. We just had that smile and that confidence through it all. And obviously it was not a... Uh, all of a sudden that happens. It was a four-year process and I, I think that's where I realized too since the last Olympic to this one. Uh, I think last Olympic we put a lot of pressure on ourselves and we kind of played a little bit uh, scared and, and shy and not, not really confident at that moment and I think four years later it was a whole process where we changed the whole culture from our, G, our GM Gina to our coaching staff to the players where we were confident. We we were ha we were having fun through uh, those big games, and I think that made a big difference. From like you saw it throughout all the Olympics, like the girls were smiling on the bench, we were celebrating each other's success, and uh, it, this group was very special. And I think we're bringing that gold medal with this group uh, is something that it's hard to put into words. That's for sure. You guys even had fun in warm-ups. We sure did. <laughs> that always. <laughs> That's awesome. Uh, did, the, did the little hockey star who grew up 45 minutes out of Quebec City ever think that she would be able to do what you've done in the last little while? We have pictures of, of one of the rinks that you grew up playing in. Yeah, that's where it all started. I think that's where community uh, comes in and that's where it all comes comes back to being able to go back to your community where it all started, being able to share that gold medal with them. Uh, I'm not the only one. All of us have a have a special bond with our community and families, and that's where it all started, and being able to, to bring it back to, to our small towns, it's always special. Uh, and I think that's a big part of why you're a part of Craft Hockeyville, and nominations are now open for Craft Hockeyville to win a quarter of a million dollars in upgrades towards a local arena. What has that community and, and Booseville meant, meant to you and your growth as a hockey player, if I pronounced it right, and if I didn't, I apologize to my mom, <laughs> who's from Quebec. Hey. It was great friendship. Uh, <laughs> I think obviously that, that ring that you saw, that's where it all started. Uh, with my brother, uh, with my minor hockey, uh, that's where it all happened. Having my family in the stands and our Seacraft hockey, that's why it's very special. That community brings, uh, hockey brings community together. And I think it, it, it's huge. And when I'm able to go back, obviously you, you get away a little bit from your community when you have to travel, when you go to school. Um, but Truly, when you take the time to go back and say thank you to people that really uh, helped you throughout through it all, I think it's huge, and I think it, it, it's hard to put, put it into words because hockey really brings community together, and that's what craft hockey is all about. Awesome. Uh, from the past to the future, Mary Philippe, there's a lot of talk about your future in the hockey world. Uh, you got a few opportunities in front of you these days. I haven't <laughs> really uh, sat down yet, but obviously I have a couple text messages that I need to, to reply soon but obviously I'm just taking a little bit of time myself and enjoying the moment but uh, we'll see we'll see what, what happens in the future but uh, we'll, we'll stay in the present right now. I mean obviously the way you're playing uh, you have some real good years in hockey left in you wherever you want. I mean, listen, 2026 isn't that far away. I don't want to get you that far ahead, especially when I think you got a little bit of a sunburn because you're in the sun right <laughs> now and enjoying a bit of a vacation. But when, when hockey is done, at least playing for you, do you see yourself working in women's hockey? Do you self, see yourself working in the NHL? Like, what do you see in the future if you allow yourself to look that far? 
Yeah, I would love to be involved in hockey. I think hockey is my is a huge part of my life. Uh, it's been there. I love it. That's what uh, wakes me up in the morning. It still is my passion. I love it. So try to keep playing as long as I can, if I can keep up with the youngster. And uh, obviously, after my career, I would love to be involved in terms of coaching and management. Uh, anything that can be involved in hockey, uh, that's something I would truly uh, love to do. Do you see a fifth Olympics in your future? If, uh, if the body can keep up, if the mental is still there, I would love that. I still love it. It's still there, so we'll go one year at a time. All right. When, when Spooner joined us here on the show with Dave Bien, I asked Natalie for like the third or 10th or 23rd time um, about a pro league and a sustainable pro league. Do you feel like we're getting close to a sustainable pro women's hockey league? Uh, it is coming. Uh, I truly believe it's coming very shortly. Um, obviously, uh, great things take time. I think we're, we're all aware of that with women's hockey. The dialogue is always the same every four years when we talk about it, when people are so excited about, about watching us at the Olympics. But I think we got to change that. we got to change that to every year. We're excited about watching the um, the women's game. Uh, and I think it's going to come. Uh, I think we got to be a little bit more patient. We have the right people in place. We create an association with the PWHPA uh, where we have the right people that supports us. And uh, we, we truly believe it's going to happen soon. Awesome. Uh, listen, if you got one tenth of the viewers that you get at the Olympics, that would be a sustainable pro league like this. Before I let you go, though, uh, and this has been fun, this is a true story. My son keeps asking me to rent an RV when this pandemic thing is all done and take a long road trip through Canada and the United States of America, stopping at different arenas and ballparks. He just, this is like his dream. He's plotted out all of the stops along the way. I heard that you got an RV. Is that the off season for you? Like, are you just cruising like my son dreams of? <laughs> to be honest, I love it. Uh, it was a dream of mine to, at a young age, just have an RV and travel around. And obviously, it's a little bit busy, but eventually, if your son have that map, I would love to, to have it so I can uh, go through uh, so is that, map. For is that the near future? Like, just get behind the wheel and let go? Why not? I love it. Yep. <laughs> uh, that's awesome. Hey, listen, this was fun. A real treat for me. Uh, thanks so much for coming on the show. And if you ever want to come back, maybe drum up support for that professional league that we may see in the near future. If you want to just take some shots on me or Jesse, who was a former goalie, our, our door is always open, okay? Perfect. Thank you so much, Tim. Thanks for all your support. We truly appreciate it. Uh, not a problem whatsoever, and thanks for doing this.